kick it. New, 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 new. When I saw Tony's jacket, I was like, new, 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 because it reminded me of Close Encounters with Their Kind. Oh yeah. New, 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 new. Okay, let's talk about some really important with new products. We have a newsletter. It's our popular, most popular newsletter. Called New New News. But we don't sign you up for it. You have to try really hard. No, we hide it from you. It's <coughs> sneaky. Yeah. You have to log into your account, and then under your account settings, there's newsletters, and then you have to click the thing that says you want to sign up. Yeah. We will not do it automatically for yeah, you. Yeah, we have Adafruit Daily, which is a separate website, and that's for all our different newsletters from crafting and cosplay and MicroPython and maker business and electronics. But this, you have to go into your account, and you have to really, really want it. You have to, like, click save twice. Yeah. I did that this morning. Something else. I had nothing to do with this. No, save it. It was an interface, and it's like, this is an important thing. You have to click save twice. Yeah. Like, okay. I get it. All right. So let's kick it. What are these? Okay, first up, we have a little transistor kit. We put in a 10-pack of PNP transistors last week or the week before. And we've had NPM transistors for a while, but now we have a pack of 10. <coughs> you get 5 NPN, 5 PNP. Kind of handy. Some people asked for it. They said, oh, you know, I need only a couple of each. I don't need 10 of each. So uh, I thought this would be kind of nice if you just need to make, you know, a class AB amplifier, or maybe you're doing some uh, solenoid driving or LED strip driving, or you want to turn on and off something. These transistors are pretty good. They can do about like 500 milliamps plus of current. They're good for at least 30 volts, I think, maybe 40 volts of drive. So really good when you are like, hey, I have a microcontroller. I want to drive a solenoid. This transistor can uh, do the job very nicely for you. Okay. Next up, a cable. Yeah, this is a interesting cable. I actually haven't seen this before, but uh, it turns out they do exist. It's a micro to micro B cable. And the reason this is really handy is Weird. if you have uh, an on the go device, so a tablet or phone uh -huh. that has a micro USB connector like socket on it, and you want to connect it to another device that's the on the go client, um, you normally have to use an on-the-go adapter, um, and it kind of sucks. It, this is much nicer. You just plug it right in. And since almost everything these days is micro USB, it's just, you have this one cable, and it kind of does the job for you. So I can show on the overhead what I had to do before and what I'm going to do now. Okay. So, mm -hmm. like, if you had something like the you know, Arduino Zero, which has this on-the-go USB port, so you can you know, attach a keyboard, normally you would use um, a cable like this. And so this gives you a micro USB to um, A cable to plug it in like that, and then you would plug your normal cable into here. So it's kind of like you got two cables, but that's silly. Why would you do that? You can just have this cable, and then um, you can plug this side into, you know, whatever you like, like your Joy, and it will even power it up, which is kind of sweet. And um, now you can have the Joy control the Arduino, and it acts like a keyboard, and then you just have the USB host library to manage that for you. Some USB host devices have a normal A port, but a lot of them don't anymore. A lot of them go with a micro USB, especially since this port can be either client or host. So for those situations, that's what this cable is good for. Also, if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero or a Zero W, you know that that's how the USB port comes out. It's only a micro USB on the go. Um, and so that's a good place to um, get this one of these cables. So you can just plug something in directly like your and a keyboard or a mouse or a disk drive or whatever, you can do that with just one cable. So that's why I got it. Very handy. Very small. Compact. That's cool. Easy to use. Okay, but next up. Reduce clutter. A keyboard. Yeah, we have the little micro <coughs> Bluetooth keyboard. This one is a little bigger. Um, it's, you know, kind of a tablet keyboard, but I thought, you know, since we have uh, the Pi 3 and the uh, Pi Zero W with Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth Classic, and it can do keyboard, I thought it would be good to have another keyboard that people can use because you don't need a dongle. It's wireless, but the Bluetooth is built in. It pairs really easily. So we have the little micro keyboard, and then this one is kind of, I kind of like this. It was, um, it has nice keyboard depth, which I, I like. Like the keys are, you know, you, they, you feel like something. You know, it's not that um, heavy, so if you want to have it stick, you know, put something underneath that's all sticky to get it to stay on your table. It's kind of meant to be portable. Um, but if it's thin, you can kind of slide it behind the monitor or, you know, between the desk and the, and the keyboard or something and just, um, or, you know, with a paper slot and keep it there. And then you can pull this out when you need to use it. It has a built-in battery, uh, charging, and then it's just Bluetooth. And it works well. It's a full keyboard, which I like. And it's got all the extra keys. So mm -hmm. really good to use. And so we, we tried this. It works with, of course, 
tablets, Android, iOS, you know, whatever, Mac, computer, but we kind of are carrying this specifically for people who want to use it with a Raspberry Pi. So what else about the battery life? So uh, I've been using, I was testing these and using it. I haven't had to charge it yet, so I don't really know. It's a couple hours. Yeah. I mean, this isn't for enough, like... Enough for me not to have to go, oh my God, it's not working. I wouldn't, you know, it's not yeah. for super long term. I mean, for long term, you would just leave it plugged in, of course. Um, but I'd say probably like five plus hours. Can you measure from the left of the Z to the right of the slash to give us an idea of the pitch? I don't know. This is 10 inches across. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is 10 inches. So this is like seven and a half inches. Okay. It's not full, full size. Um, it's a little smaller. It's like 80%, but it's not bad. It's like you can still use it. Yeah. It's about this size. <laughs> okay. Okay. Next up. It's back. I have some Zoxbox PCBs. Put them in the shop if you want to build your own. We don't have a kit right now because, well... The parts are rare. The parts are very rare. But this rare. is part of what you need if you were to do this. But there's people who still want to build them, so it's I thought... It's essential. Hey. Yeah. You know, if you can go to DigiKey, Mauser, pick up the parts, and then you find the parts that you can't find uh, elsewhere, you can make your own. But this is the this is the heart of it. Except no lim uh, imitations. These are official Zuckbox PCBs. And they're in blue. Yeah. The first one we did are green, but now they're blue with nice gold pads. I actually even made a couple updates and fixes. I made the DC jack slotted, um, so it's a little nicer. And uh, I cleaned up a couple things on the on the traces yeah, and stuff. Yeah, this is cool. So okay. Otherwise, it's... That it's was that music that we played in the beginning of the show. It was it acid? Acid techno. Acid techno. I don't know who actually made the music, because you just... It was it. for something we used for Citizen Engineer. And it was someone who we contacted, and they said we could use yeah. it as a, as a track. Okay. All right. Start of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and the entire community. Feather Joywing. Yeah. It's coming soon, but we're going to have it in very, very, very soon. Uh, we had some oven excitement. Uh, but the oven's back, uh, so we'll be making yeah. these shortly. So this is... Oh, can you go to the overhead? Because it's actually... I want to show this as a, yeah. a demo. Let's do it. Um, so yeah, this is <coughs> it's kind of this is a little handheld demo. I'm just I have a little display over here, and um, this is just showing all the buttons being pressed and detected. There's a select button. There's up down left right buttons, and then up down left right analog joystick. And you know you can read the analog values. I'm just I'm just sort of detecting if it's pressed or not. Um, but it's one of those thumbsticks, kind of similar to a PSP. It's kind of a knockoff That's PSP connector. Um, works just fine. It's a potentiometer. And uh, you got five buttons. And uh, can you go to the overhead picture of it? Uh, which one do you want to go to? The one, that yes, one? that's fine. Um, what's neat about this is um, one of the issues with feathers is it's actually kind of hard to find uh, commonality of all the feathers. It allows you to have two analog pins and five digital I.O. pins because some, like the ESP8266, only have one analog input. And uh, some have the analog outputs on the first two pins, and so maybe you don't want to overwrite those. And um, we were looking around for a chip that could do two analog inputs and also five digital inputs for um, like an I2C converter, and it didn't exist, so we made one. So this is our first Seesaw board. Can you go to the third image? Yeah. What is Seesaw? Seesaw, you can see our lovely logo underneath the Feather logo, Feather is um, a, a chip core that Dean wrote. He's an engineer here at Adafruit. And what it does is it converts I2C to a variety of protocols. So instead of just having an I2C to analog converter, an I2C to temperature, I2C to digital I.O., you can configure the chip however you want, and then you program it, and then it kind of acts as like a, a universal translator from I2C on one side of the seesaw to almost anything else you'd like on the other side. Uh, so this is our first Seesaw product. Um, we're going to be using this a lot because there's a lot of situations where, you know, maybe you want a rotary encoder to I2C. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing that does I2C to rotary encoder, but it's very hard to make sure that you have a device with multiple rotary encoders. It, it's very challenging to have enough timers to manage them. There's a lot of code that is required. By having the Seesaw chip, which is a very low-cost ARM Cortex chip, do the management for you, um, we can basically have this, like, fully featured you know, feather joy wing and the chip costs as much as a normal I squared C GPO converter, but we get to customize it with whatever we want. So it's basically, you know, a 70 cent chip 
Um, same price as like an MCP 23008 or a PCA something something, so whatever. Keeps our pricing low and you get all these extra things. And it's more functional. You and get more. In the chat, um, congratulations to you and everyone who worked on this because they're impressed. Yeah, we're going to have more documentation. It's, it is going to be open source. We have to release all the libraries um, for it so you can make your own. It's based off the SAMD09, uh, which is a very low cost. It's the lowest cost Cortex M0 you can get and has a built in crystal and it has a, you know, DAC, uh, ADCs, a lot of ADCs, a lot of digital IOs. It has DMA. It can do like NeoPixels. It can do timers. It's got very functional. And it's, you know, the cheapest chip we could find that can do um, this. So you're going to see this logo a bunch because there's a lot of times where we want to add um, like a feather that has a rotary encoder or UART or a multiple analog ins and we need something to convert to I squared C. That's going to do it. And that means uh, it's easy for you to stack multiple feather wings without having to worry about collisions. This is also why I did that gigantic I squared C list like a month ago. Oh. I had that list of every single device with every I squared C address that was used because we wanted to make sure that we didn't collide with any popular I squared C addresses. That all makes sense now. And you can also see on the bottom you can select multiple I squared C addresses and more. So we'll we'll be chatting about that soon. But right now you can uh, sign up. We'll get this in the store soon. And uh, we have Circuit Python, Python, and Arduino libraries. Or maybe yeah, we have all three right now. Yeah. So you can use this with anything and uh, works great. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada, new parks are over. Good work. Woo!